Who amongst you has ever wondered if the dead could return to life? Is that really possible? Reanimation. We've been invited to Geneva by Lord Byron. Would you like to join me in the parlour, Miss Goldwyn? I have no quarrel with you becoming lovers. Do you wish to be with someone else? I no longer see the world and its works as they before appeared to me, and men appear to me as monsters. <clears throat> we are each to write a ghost story. It's a competition. The woman is not intelligent enough to form ideas of her own. What's wrong with you? You, Miss Godwin, have the chance to prove me wrong. Don't you recognize Victor Frankenstein? Hello and welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt. That's Christy. We are here talking about Mary Shelley. Yes. Uh, you want to describe what yes, Mary Shelley is? Yes, we're going to piece together all the pieces <laughs> of our thoughts to put together a Frankenstein of a review for you here. That was a terrible joke. That, so thank you. A, I'm here. A Frankenstein's all week. monster. It was. So, um, so Elle Fanning stars as the great writer, Mary Shelley, and this is basically about what her life was like and what happened in her teenage years and her youth that informed her as she strove to create an artistic and literary voice of her own and leading up to the writing of, of Frankenstein and what it took to make that. And although you don't actually see her do that until nearly the very end, and Elle Fanning is great, and she is great in everything, and she she just turned 20. She's just incredibly versatile and can do it all and, like, made that transition from child star to adult star with, like, not just herself intact, but, like, she, she, she keeps getting better. Um, and she's great here, and everyone's great here, and, and Douglas Booth is great as the young, hunky Percy Shelley. Right. He kind of looks like young George Michael. He's very, yeah, okay. he's very pretty. Yeah. Like wake me up before you go go era, but shaved. Michael. But yeah, Clean and, shaven. and and it it looks great the period detail and the clothes, but it's it's frustratingly safe. And it, it yeah. is, for a woman whose life was unorthodox right. and tumultuous and really fascinating right. and dramatic, like this is a movie that it's it's in it's in its box and it's tastefully in that box, and that seems contradictory to the subject to matter. The, to the subject matter, right? Like uh, Shelley comes in, so well, part of it is you end up meeting Lord Byron, right? And the famous quote yes. about Lord Byron is that he's mad, bad, and dangerous to know by one of his <laughs> former lovers, right? And so you're kind like I wanted in this movie, I kind of went into this thinking, okay, so Mary Shelley had gotten together, or young Mary uh, Corbin, Corgan? Um, Godwin. Godwin, sorry. Yeah. Hmm. Mary Godwin hmm. ends up with Percy Bice Shelley. Bish. Bish, yeah. Shelley. We'll get it all right. Which They're complicated. He, you know, they have this kind of not exactly marriage. They yeah. have this somewhat. He was open, married. Right. <laughs> you find out. Uh, you with know, which kid. look, not a spoiler if with you know a your kid. history. Yeah. It's uh, canonically accurate. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's this whole like they talk about having these kind of open relationships mm -hmm. and and they get together and they're somewhat there's the scandal that like gets them kicked out of where they're living and it's all of this, like, they're, they're so keen on going against the grain of the societal mores of the time because they're embracing this kind of romantic, kind of free love sensibility. And so you want something that's kind of as sexy and as almost dangerous as something like Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah. Like, you want that, like, okay, show us why there's a scandal. Show what, yeah. like, and... It's, it's refined but also dangerous. Right, yes. and this is, I mean, this could have been an episode of Downton Abbey. Yeah. Right? I mean, it doesn't help that there's a couple actors that are that have showed up in Downton Abbey, but mm -hmm. this is relatively tame. Yeah. And, cons and again, considering the subject matter, right. like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Yeah, like, when Tom Sturridge shows up as Lord Byron, when they go to Lord Byron's estate in Geneva, like, things really pick up. And there is this undercurrent because he he's just a force of nature and he's right. selfish and reckless and that's exciting to watch. And not unlike Lando Calrissian, pansexual. Right. right, and he also likes capes. But he's fun, and there's a possibility of things really getting shaken up once they go there, and then that's kind of a bust eventually as well. I, I guess you're supposed to understand that like the seeds of what she's going to eventually write get planted there. Like There have been notions and ideas dancing around her head, and then finally, emotionally, she's pushed to write the thing that will make her famous. Right, and, and I important. guess it, and 
it feels like it focuses you. It almost it's too on the nose in too many places because mm-hmm. it like gives you every little piece. Mm-hmm. Like you know, there's the show that they go and see the the scientific experiment right. thing. Phantasmagoria. Where, right, yeah. where <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, well that's where that came yeah. from, <laughs> and you know, it gives you each little tiny piece and and. It, it's too much. Yeah. It's similar to Solo. It's right. it's kind of, you know, the other similar similarity to Solo is, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to give you every little clue that mm-hmm. you ever may have thought about to show how clever we are. Mm-hmm. And it's like, guys, it, it's okay. And they do spell things out. Like yeah. in the dialogue, they do say things right. to each other that maybe we should have already been able to imply on our own yeah. based on what we've seen. Um, so this is directed by Haifa Al-Mansur, who is the first female director from Saudi Arabia. And so I can see why she was drawn to this figure and drawn to this story, you know, this is a, a trailblazing writer in a lot of ways, you know, and, and not just as a writer, but as a woman in society and in proper London society, I could see why she was drawn to telling her story. And I wish there had been just like boxes for her to burst out of and really do it in a daring way that right. was exciting, you know, visually, narratively. It looks great, but it looks like a very tasteful yeah. period piece. Yeah. I mean, it so, almost comes off of just a costume drama. Yeah. Um, but... El Fanning is great, as always, so I'm saying a 5.5. Uh, I'm a little bit lower than that. I'm giving a 4.5. All right, so our number is a 5. It's at 31% at the tomato meter, which would suggest that it is bad. It's not bad. That's probably a lot of, like, two-star reviews, which makes it seem bad. Um, but it's okay. Yeah, I think it means if you're a fan of this period of writing, should people see it for that alone? Sure. Sure. If you're a fan. Or if you're not, go and learn nothing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 